welcome to Turn Up the Heat. What is Turn Up the Heat all about? We're going to get into that in a little while when we quiz Ben over here. Ben Crawford, who I already introduced you all to in my intro for our guest today. But really quick again, former collegiate basketball star. Congratulations. That's amazing. I can't wait to hear how you got into OCR from basketball. Ben really enjoys going to professional sporting events and especially loves the Celtics. Go figure. We're here in Massachusetts. Uh, also an NBA graduate last year. Congratulations on that. Thank you. And currently Thank you. working as a, um, a financial associate for Harvard. They're doing some commuting there. So God bless you for that because <laughs> I'm all done with the commuting world. Um, and then, so what I love about Ben and why I really wanted to have Ben on our show today is because he is climbing the OCR world fast and furious. Last year, correct me if I'm wrong, if I don't have all my facts exactly straight, but Ben did the Montana trifecta weekend. He, he uh, competed in the open class at the Killington Beast and the Killington Beast is no joke, massive hills. I don't even know if you can call them hills. I don't, they're, they're, there's a, mountains. There's mountains. <laughs> mountains. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So he did that open class. And now I know this year we did New Jersey. We did the New Jersey Ultra Beast, which is the beast two times plus some. And he competed. Was that open or was that age group? It was age. That, that was and also uh, Killington was the Ultra last year. Oh, that yeah. was the Ultra. No, the ultra okay, last awesome. Year. So yeah. I had that wrong. Sorry. But so also, but that was open. And then I know you did the age group this year and now has qualified to compete in Elite, which you're going to be competing in the Ultra Elite at championships world championships in canada yeah uh so i'm gonna be i'm planning on going to the north american elite series yep. um you know it's gonna be a good experience i mean yep. up there in canada gonna be yep. some you know some technical terrain of course the course and the obstacles are gonna be very very challenging yep. you know i mean it really is the best in the sport yeah. so yeah. i'm looking forward to you know going there you know yeah. living it up and having some fun you know really competing at the highest level yeah I, I can't wait to continue to watch your journey seriously so obviously i have a ton of questions because i know you've learned a lot along the way you've learned a lot from megan beck who's an ocr champion herself um and then i mean what was the catalyst that got you into ocr you're a basketball star i understand athlete right so you want to do something maybe maybe athletic and that got you into ocr but i don't really know what got you into obstacle course racing Honestly, um, so I went on a date with a woman two year, about two years ago. Uh, she had mentioned that she did a Spartan Sprint yep. um, in Boston. I forget which year, but it was a 5K. And so honestly, that got, got me curious. Yep. And so I did some research um, and I was like, OK, you know, I this seems a little interesting. Like, I'm going to, you know, sign up. Uh, so at that point, I kind of started committing my training towards it to the best of what I knew at that time. Now, it, what I was doing at the time, nowhere near what I'm doing now, but for, for what I knew at that time, like I was doing the best I could uh, to train for it. Um, so then uh, fast forward to May of 2021, um, I was just like, okay, like where, when's the soonest Spartan race? Like when is the soonest I can get out on a Spartan race? Because it, it, we were just coming out of COVID. So a lot of events were getting canceled and postponed. So it was really hard, you know, just trying to find an event, you know? So, yeah. um, so I really just looked at, you know, when, whenever was the soonest, um, Spartan race and it happened to be Montana. So I'm like, okay, let's book the tickets. Let's fly out there. So flew across the country, um, did the trifecta weekend there. Um, and honestly, my first race was the Montana beast, you yeah. know, so started out on a half marathon distance. Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, and honestly, I was hooked after that, and, right, right. you know, fast forward here. I am now, yeah, you know, yeah. learning a lot of things in between and, you know, getting to know a lot of people and, you know, seeing what they do and, you know, just being able to compete, you know, right. it's really, really fun. Absolutely. Yeah. You got the bug. It happens to a lot of us. And um, so I know that you say that you're not, you're never really a runner and that you've learned a lot along the way. So can you share with us, what have you learned? What mistakes did you make in the beginning that you're, you're making less of those same mistakes now? Um, and how did you overcome not being a runner? Because I hear that a lot. And a lot of people that are considering doing even the shorter distances are like, well, but I'm not a runner. So what advice would you give and, and what was your experience been like? Yeah, certainly. Um, so in my experience, like, I mean, I come from a basketball background. It's more kind of like interval kind of sprints, mm -hmm. you know, and then you have stoppages because you have fouls and um, stoppage of play. But 
I'm, I've never been a natural runner. Um, anything that I have, you know, gained from running, it's really just because I've been working on it of late. Um, and, you know, like you can definitely, you know, enhance your running ability, you know, with the right training and the right practice. And also even just, you know, getting to know the right people. Um, we have great coaches, I mean, here at Castile, here in Lawrence, Massachusetts. Um, I did even some research online. I've even talked to some other people that, you know, are ranking high in age group and even some in elites and taking advice from them in terms of how to um, enhance my running ability. And, you know, I'm just putting, you know, just taking bits and pieces from different people and putting it all together. And, you know, I'm seeing some improvements, you know, so, you know, I'm just going to keep on, keep on keeping on and I'll learn up with. Well, listen, I'm sure a lot of you out there, the viewers are thinking this, what I'm thinking, and I don't want to give away all your secrets because I know you're in the competitive class and now going to be competing elite. But how do you prepare for an ultra beast? Like, what does your training regimen look like? High level, you have to get into the granular. But what is what is your general weekly workout plan? I know we're here at this wonderful facility, um, Fitness Appeal in Lawrence, Massachusetts, that Coach Victor runs. Um, we have our obstacle courses. So sports specificity, you're going to be on obstacle. You better practice some obstacles, right? But what are some other things that you do in your training? Definitely. Um, so I like to incorporate many different things, but I'd say the priority within my training is definitely getting my miles in um, and getting my running in. I run about six days a week. Um, and then I usually try to run between 50 to 60 miles a week of, of, of like uncompromised running, just, you know, to just get the rhythm. And then, like here at Fitness Heal, usually in my compromise running because we're doing um, everything from DECA simulations to high rock simulations and a lot of muscle endurance activity here. So I typically try to use that as more of my compromise running. And you, and you need a little bit of that, you know, yeah. like to simulate, you know, oh, you, you're like 20 miles in and you still have to keep going and still try to maintain a pace. Right. Um, so I incorporate that in my training. Um, I actually live near Harvard stadium. So I actually try to get, to try to get some steps in like yeah. once a week, yeah. um, there I, and I, you know, just work on, you know, just train the quads yeah. on sustained climb. Right, right. Um, and then also just, you know, as I mentioned earlier, some DECA and high rock simulation things, um, for like weighted workouts and things of that nature. Um, a couple of times a week, I'll go to, go to uh, my gym back, um, back in the city and I'll, you know, do like strength and power work, like ram burpees, uh, push-ups, pull-ups, like body weight kind of exercises that work on, you know, strength and power um, and functional, functional OCR strength, you know, um, things of that nature. So I'd, I'd say like that pretty much kind of encompasses my training. And then, you know, there are always the one-offs, you know, like somebody might be like, hey, Ben, let's go, you know, for a trail run or, hey, let's go for, um, you know, a quick you know, five mile run or something like that, you know, there are some one offs, but I'd say like consistently, um, you know, I stick to more of the high rocks, deck and simulation right. running and stadiums. Kind of right, running. right. Simulation is everything. Be able to not just go to a whole bunch of miles and not just be on the obstacle course, on the obstacle, um, not just doing weights and putting it all together because that's really simulating what a race is really like. Um, and then you do a lot of climbing too. I know you've been doing a lot of the the four thousand footers in New Hampshire. We love the four thousand footers in New Hampshire; they're beautiful. But can you tell us a little bit about that? How often are you doing that? And what do you have next? Because you started to um, tell me a little bit, so I think the viewers would love to hear about that because you have a really big one coming up in August. Yeah. Um, so actually, so I started um, calling my climbing sessions uh, mountain training sessions. I usually try to do them once a month, and again, it's just you know, training the quads on sustained climbing for, you know, for multiple hours, you know, being able to, you know, go up, you know, consistent grades for multiple hours and being able to handle that because in Spartan racing, you know, especially, you know, for Killington, for example, you're going up K1, you're, you know, you're going up K1 for about an hour, yeah. you know, and then, you know, of course you have the downhill. So you have to train the muscles to be able to climb. And then also you work on the descents as well, because they're steep mountains. Yeah. Uh, typically I try to go out to New Hampshire, about once a month and just hike, you know, any mountain I choose or even, you know, a couple of mountains. Um, I've, this year I've hiked uh, Mount Monadnock. I've hiked Gunstock multiple times. I've hiked, Mount, I, have, I hiked Mount Washington last month. Um, and that was, that was that, honestly, I'll, I'll admit that was the best hike of my life. Right. Like it was so much fun because it was also like climbing too. It wasn't right. just hiking. Right. Like it's, right. a, it's scrambling, you know, the last mile yeah. up. So, yeah. you know, that was an experience. Um, and and then, you know, in August, I plan on uh, doing the presidential traverse and, and cleaning it in the day. Um, so 
you know, just again, you know, being able to go long distances and climbing and, you know, mix in some power hiking and, you know, gets a little bit of strides up, you know, up steep grades, yep, just yep. being able to sustain it and in technical terms. Right, right. Awesome. That's so exciting. I'm doing the presidential um, in Traverse in August too. That's my plan. Well, let's compare notes. Oh, <laughs> and it's, I think it'll be great to do it solo, right? You can really go at your own pace. And I know you do a lot of your climbing solo, right? Yeah, yeah, typically. I mean, you know, but if any, but I definitely would appreciate a climbing buddy. You know, if anybody wants to climb with me, you know, oh boy, you're, hit me up. You're gonna get it out. Yeah. You know, but you uh, invite into your world. So listen, um, turn up the heat. Do you know what turn up the heat is about? Oh yeah, it's you know, it's pretty much like understanding you know how wellness drives you know how basically how wellness drives. Um, you know, overall fitness level, yeah. um, you know, it's mental health uh, as well. And just being able to, you know, be the best version of yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and have you, have you by any chance ever seen the 212 degree facial video? Oh, not. Before I get into that, those of you that know me out there, and I, I say this in each of my shows, um, and maybe you don't even know this about me, but I love hot sauce. And I'm talking like Carolina Reaper hot sauce. I don't know if you know the different Colville scale hot sauces. Like people say, oh yeah, I love hot sauce. I like Tabasco. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm talking this jalapeno, this habanero, then this ghost pepper, and then there's the Carolina Reaper. I like the Carolina Reaper. Do you like hot sauce? Uh, if it's mild, yes. Okay, so mild. I don't, I don't like too spicy. I'm that's, I'm that, that, but that. that's just me. I'm yeah. taking note of that for a reason. We'll find out later. But that is not the reason why my podcast and my show and my platform is called Turn Up the Heat. It's not because Trisha Hoyt loves hot sauce, <laughs> but I like to include that anyway. That's just a little side note. Um, Turn Up the Heat stemmed from the motivational video 212 degrees, where at 211 degrees, water is hot. At 212 degrees, water boils, and this steam, and it can move a locomotive, okay? So that one degree makes a world of difference. It can move in a locomotive. And if you think about the Olympics or really any athletic endeavors, first place, first, second place, gold for silver, usually it's a fraction of a second difference. Like say you're taking a runner, for example, or skier. It's a fraction of a, of a second that separates the greatest from the, from the good or the, or the great, okay? And so with that being said, this platform is is a lot about, and the guests that I have on the show about, like, what can you do that is just a little bit more that's going to give you exponential results? So with that being said, I guess one of my questions to you is, what would you um, inspire the viewers or what would turn up the heat mean to you? And how do you apply that to your life where just that little extra bit, you might, you might do the extra workout or go the extra mile? What does that mean to you? Yeah, I mean, like... It's, it, I mean, I'll use a term that I learned in basketball um, a lot. Like sometimes, you know, when people are scouting players or you have, um, you know, coaches, you know, discussing certain players, like I'll hear a lot of people saying, oh, this guy has it. Or, oh, you know, this uh, female basketball player, she has it, you know, and it is that, you know, little, little, you know, marginal difference that yeah. separates, you know, like you said, the greats from the goods mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and it's like that little marginal advantage, you know, really can change the complexion of a game can change the complexion of a team. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's like, for me, you know, that it for me is like, for example, like if I'm running like a loop and I've already reached, you know, my daily goal of miles, right. you know, for that specific day, you know, but I still have like certain distance to get to my apartment, for example, right. I'll run that extra distance. Right. Like I won't right. just like walk it. I'll take, I'll yeah. take, you know, the extra, the extra, you know, even if it's like point, you know, 10 or 15 miles, just, just to, you know what I mean? Just to continue the endurance. And, you know, of course it also, it also is a dual benefit because you get home faster you get too, home faster, you know, you get but faster, a lot faster. Oh, well, listen, yeah. the, obviously that second or those few seconds count of, of running and getting more miles in jogging, running, versus the walking, because that could make a difference in your fitness level, which has helped you to podium, and you need to podium, I think it's top three, um, which also helped get you approved to be an elite pro top five. athlete. Top, top five. five. Okay, top yeah. five. So, you know, that makes a difference. Would it, you know, had you not been, been in that fitness level, maybe you would have only, you wouldn't have podiumed, and then you wouldn't be invited to do elite now. Right. So it does obviously that 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 little bit of difference of going those extra few 
you know, whatever it's second mile steps of running to put you at a higher fitness level than that might have separated you from fifth or sixth place or whatnot. So there you go. That's turn up the heat, that little extra bit that gets you exponential results. The other objective for turn up the heat is, especially with mental health of these days, issues with mental health and suicide and depression rates being through the roof. Um, I like to talk about adversity and what types of adversity or mental self-talk you have um, during a race and how the, the mental aspect of the sport translates over to life. So maybe if you could talk to us about what adversity have you faced? Do you have mantras? Do you have mental demons during your training or during a race? And, and how do you overcome that? Like, what, what is your self-talk look like? Yeah, certainly. Um, speaking to like the adversity point, I'd say when I just started out um, training for ultras, which was in January of this year, um, you know, I, I'm one of those people that, you know, I, I, I want to say I work hard, um, you know, and, but I want results like instantly, like I'll, you know, put a lot of work in and it's like, I want the results instantly. Like I'm, you know, instant gratification, but like, you know, in the beginning, I kind of, you know, realized I was frustrated a lot because, you know, I, I run a certain amount of miles. I look at the time and I'm like, okay. How will I, how will I do this, you know, next week? Like, will I be able to cut down some seconds next week? And it's like, oh, I'll see, you know, my times next week, you know, that it'll increase. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I'll be frustrated because I'm like, how am I like five seconds slower mm -hmm. in the same distance that I ran last week? Right. This, you know, yeah. so it's like just understanding that, you know, things take time. And especially with running, it's very, very tricky because you have to build, you know, an endurance base. And again, that's something that I learned you know, like pretty much throughout my ultra training is that, you know, you have to build that base first and that's what really, really takes time. And then until it, it really wasn't until I understood that, that I started to see results and everything kind of, you know, come together a little bit from my training. And then um, in regards to rate, uh, the races, you know, I, I honestly just, you know, I, I just, I just like, you know, live in the moment, you know, in the races, like I try to just, feel how my body's feeling, you know, know where I am, know also relative to where my competition is, you know, like if I could see people that I'm competing against, you know, and just understand space and understand just like how fast I would need to go when I can slow it down, when I can make my moves, you know, it, it, you, it really is like playing a game of chess, right, you know, right, in, in, right. in races. Like, it really is a game of chess, you know, because right. it's, it's really strategy. It's a Especially, lot more strategy than if people would probably think, oh, you yeah. go out on the course, you run, you run some yeah. miles, you go over some obstacles. It's so much strategy. Especially in an yeah. ultra where it's like, you know, long distance. So yeah. like, there's a lot of ground, you know, you can yeah. make up and cover. And, you know, it's it, it really it really is. Chess. Absolutely. So it sounds like in, in the aspect of training, um, patience is, is something that you've learned, right? Is, is that your training is to be a little bit more patient with yourself at time and change, the change will happen and then improvements will happen. And then as far as racing goes, being present and aware. So it has, have you found that that, have you used what you've learned in, in training and racing and applied it into real life? You're a successful um, collegiate, former collegiate star in basketball. You're a professional now at Harvard. Do you apply what you learn in training and racing to your everyday life? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I so uh, one of my friend's uh, fathers when I was younger, um, we were hanging out all the time. He mentioned um, to my friend and I, you know, a quote like saying, you know, the three P's, you know, passion, purpose, and persistence. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's something that's really resonated and stuck in my head. You yeah. know, as I've gotten older, yeah. you know, matured. And, you know, that's just something I try to keep in mind and anything that I'm passionate about, whether, you know, whether it's OCR, whether it's my career, you know, whether it's, you know, just even my overall lifestyle, you know, yeah. like, yeah. just, you know, like, whatever you want, go for it, you know, 100%, you know, be persistent, you know, and, and really, you know, be resilient, too, you know, they're, you're going to go through adversity, you're going to go through ups and downs, there's going to be tough times, you know, but, you know, it's, again, that 1% of the people that are resilient, you know, they're going to probably get the results that they want, right, you know? Right. So I just try to keep that in mind, just keep that perspective and point of view. And, you know, that kind of is what, you know, pushes me forward. Awesome. Thank you for that insight. And I'm going to, and I'm going to think of that when I'm having my hard days, because we all have our hard days and, and seasons for sure. And sorry about the the cleaning. They, we keep it very clean here at Fitness Appeal. So they're starting to do the cleaning after we've had some classes. So I might have to move a little bit closer to the computer because we do have a couple more questions. Um, all right, I can't 
it would be remiss for me to not talk about nutrition, especially as this hobby. <laughs> um, especially because I'm sorry, Ben, but there's just some advice that I don't know that I would take from you, but I'm willing to try anything because I am a pretty adventurous person. But this guy over here, when I was starting to do my ultras, I was trying to get advice from him. And during the transition, after you've done half of an ultra, you get a quick break and that's called transition. You can eat, refuel, go to the bathroom, change your shoes, whatever. Well, he eats, what do they call it? Cinnabons? <laughs> Cinnamon rolls. Cinnamon rolls. I'm like, I'm not doing that. All right. I'm not ready for that. I'm not saying I won't try that someday, maybe during a training run and like, you know, instead of experimenting during a race. But can you please share with me? I know, I know. Is it Megan Beck? Right. Do I have her name right? Yeah. 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 I don't think Megan Beck gave you that advice. I think she gave you some nutritional consultation, but I don't think she told you to have cinnamon rolls or whatever. So where did you get that from? Honestly, um, honestly, yeah, <laughs> it, it a, actually came out. For cinnamon buns there. So it actually came out kind of um, at random. So I was running one day, like, or I was going to run one day, um, but I was actually in the office uh, working and uh, some of my colleagues brought me some cinnamon buns to my office. So I was like, okay, I have to run and I have to run pretty hard. Like, you know, it was, it was a tempo day, it was a speed day. Um, so I had to run pretty hard, you know, in like three hours. So I'm like, okay, um, should I do this? Should I not? So then I I couldn't resist. Like I, I, I gave in, you know, and I ended up eating like four cinnamon rolls, you know, three hours before I ran. But I know where he's going with that. But it was three hours before. So it had a little bit of time to sit. And I ended up actually running really, really well. Yeah. Like, really, that. really well. So, from that point on, I was like, okay, you know, let's try it. So, then I did it again for another tempo run. And then I did it for a long run, like, a couple of weeks later. And I ran well all those days. So, I'm like, okay, you know, my body, you know, my body knows it. It's, it, you know, it's all about familiarity. Yeah. And especially in an ultra, you know, when it's transition, you know, when you're like, you know, you, you're kind of you're not really thinking you're more like reacting you're like right. okay i'm in transition you know right. let's drink something let's eat something yep. you know let's pull something let's grab something right. you know so it's really just you know what is your body familiar with know like what you, what it can and can't take right know what you can and can't eat you know in yep. certain athletic activities you know whether you're running hard whether you're running um you know fast you know right. whether you're running slow um and just just know your body you right. know but for me i just like cinnamon rolls just because one they're good. Everybody loves them. You can't resist. But it's also like two. They give you a, there's a lot of carbs in it. Yeah. So it's like energy. And especially in an ultra, you're gonna end up burning it off right. probably within the next, you know, few miles yeah. out of transition yeah. anyway. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's like it gives you kind of that extra jolt. But that's what it did for me in my training runs. So, you know, it kind of translated over into New Jersey when I did it in New Jersey as well. So it I'd say it definitely helped me help me. Oh my gosh. All right. Yeah. I can be really impressionable. I'm going to have to try this someday. I don't know. Just, you know, I'm not going to experiment during a, during an ultra, but if that's what your body knows, that's awesome. The last decision you have to make. So if you know that your body reacts well to them, then I, I, I guess if I were you, I would do the same thing. But that's just, but, but also that's just, that's just in the races. You know, that's not outside. That's not every, not day. That every day. That's not every day, right. you know, you know lifestyle. Right. Yeah. Great thing. Awesome. Awesome. Should we get into really quick high level? How is your nutrition? Yeah, my nutrition is really, I'd say it's really, really good. Okay. Um, I, I really do try to get a lot of fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. every day. Um, you know, and of course, protein, you know, yep. for, you know, for my strength workouts, help my muscles recover. Um, and I do drink a lot of water. I mean, it's also hot this summer. Yeah. Very, very hot. We just yeah. came out of a heat wave. Yeah. So, you know, I'm really drinking water like crazy. Right. But, you know, I really, I really am, you know, focused on, you know, my diet and right. stuff and making sure I'm putting the right things in, okay. you know, consistently to make sure I can get the best results out of it. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. And um, sleep recovery, are you paying attention to that as well? Do you take that really serious? Or? Yeah, definitely. I, I know try. when you were getting an NBA, you weren't, because it sounds like you were only sleeping a couple hours a night last year in 2020. <laughs> yeah, I'll admit it. Like, during, when I was in school, like, there was a lot of um, late nights and early mornings. Yeah. But ever since I graduated in May of 2021, actually, two weeks after I did the Montana trifecta, you know, it's like, it really is, you know, a huge weight off my shoulders, right. but, but in terms of my general um, routine of, you know, bedtime and stuff, I try to typically go to bed around 11 o'clock and then right. I try to wake up around like, you know, 7 a.m. just to make sure I get, you know, seven, eight hours of yep. sleep at least. Um, 
make sure make sure that I can get that recovery in. And then in terms of like active recovery work, um, I stretch a lot. I have a I have a stretch band in my apartment that I use. Make sure I hit all the all the target areas. You know, after workouts, so just you know, because because body maintenance is important to preventing injuries. So, and that's something that I really understood or got to understand actually being a college athlete. I didn't understand that really until college. Like I'm thinking, you know, coming in from high school, I'm thinking, okay, I'm invincible. You know, I'm young. I haven't had, and you know, knock on wood, you know, I haven't had any like serious injuries, you know, but like, uh, again, college really educated me on the importance of body maintenance. So I really do take that seriously in my training. I love to hear that. I feel like it's very important. It's just as important as the training itself. Ben, I could talk to you forever. I've learned so much from you today, and I hope the viewers have as well. I just want everyone to know, um, you know, like a gym like this, Fitness Appeal, where it's it's made for obstacle course racing, but you don't have to be an obstacle course racer. You don't have to even be thinking about obstacle course racing. You could just want to get fit. You could just want the community um, you can just come and play in this land, but there's boot camps, there's all kinds of something for everyone here, all different fitness levels. Same with OCR. Um, if you're ever thinking about doing like a Spartan obstacle course, obstacle course race, you don't have to be in the fitness shape. I see all shapes and sizes and fitness levels out there on the course, right? You probably do too, Ben. And, um, you know, it's just something to consider if it's going to motivate you. Um, I like to tell the viewers, I like to give them a, a, a call to action, um, after one of these shows. And so one thing I'm thinking of is. Go ahead, try to have the Cinnabons and I would love to hear your comments as far as how they resonate with you, how they make you feel. <laughs> so that's one. And if you comment, um, I will take note and I'm going to put, I'm gonna do a raffle for a prize. And then do you have any other thing you wanna help me with this? Like any kind of call to action, something you've learned from Ben, if you can comment um, and, and whatever nugget you've taken from this show today, how you're gonna apply it or how you reacted to it or any of your thoughts, and I'll put you in a raffle and you will, somebody will win in, in, a, in about a week or two after the show is aired. Would you like to offer a call to action? Anything else that you can think of? Or? Uh, uh, none. Um, I, don't, <laughs> I don't have anything off the top of my head. This has been a yeah. But I cannot be held responsible for anything, you know, that happens. It's just what I did. You know, I cannot speak, you know, my experience speaks for me. I, I, want, I want to make that clear, but... Have some cinnamon, cinnamon buns, you know, like, like enjoy, little. enjoy. Exactly. We're only on the earth for a certain amount of time. We got to make sure we're eating good food now, right? Eating good yeah. food and experimenting and adventuring. A good bit. food, good mood. Thank you so much. This has been awesome. I really appreciate your time. And all of you out there, remember to thrive. Don't just survive. And you can do that by what? By turning up the heat just a little bit. Have an awesome day. Don't give it to me easy, I like a little challenge When it feels better, will you take a little damage? Slow, learn it fast, earn it, stay burning Wheels turning, it's a home, going on, going thing Don't give it to me easy, I like a little challenge When it feels better, will you take a little damage? Slow, learn it fast, earn it, stay burning Wheels turning, it's a home, going on, going on, going thing Are you are you tired? Are you are you decent? <laughs> anyway, I can I, I can edit that a little. Alright. I just you know I just editing. I, I still you know, we still gotta, you know, make sure it's professional, you know, like yeah.